In our work so far with probability, we've looked at using Venn diagrams and specific formulae to solve problems. In this video, we're going to look at using tree diagrams. We're going to work for a few questions, and for some of you, it might simply be revision. What we'll do is look at some of the key features and just look at a couple of different examples of where we could use tree diagrams. So let's start off. A box of 24 chocolates contains 10 dark and 14 milk chocolates. Linda chooses a chocolate at random and eats it, followed by another one. Fine, I'm assuming that's fine. Find the probability that Linda eats A, two dark chocolates, B, one dark chocolate and one milk chocolate. So let's get a, a tree diagram. We can do pick one and we can do pick two. So let's have pick one here and then we'll branch off with pick two. So here's pick two and pick two. We can label these up. So what we'll do, leaving ourselves enough space, which I look to have just about done. Let's move that there, that's what we want. What we'll do is say that this is going to be pick one and this is going to be pick two. So on the first one, we can have a dark. Now we know there are 10 of 24, so probability of getting a dark is 10 over 24. You can, of course, simplify that if you wish. Probability of a milk is going to be 14 over 24. Remember, these two have to be equal to 1. There are no other outcomes that could be possible. So 10 plus 14 over 24 is going to give us 1. Pick 2. Of course, we can have a dark chocolate or a milk chocolate. If we had a dark chocolate the last time, there were only 9 dark chocolates and only 23 in the box. So it becomes 9 over 23. There was still 14 milk, as we didn't have one the last time, out of the 23. And again, these equal up to 1. If we had a milk the first time, we might have a dark or a milk. If we had a milk the first time, there were still 10 dark out of 23 in the box. If we had a milk the first time, this one is now going to be a milk, and that's going to be 13 out of 23. So if it was milk last time and it's milk this time, 14 over 24, 13 over 23. So what we're looking for are two dark chocolates, dark and dark. When we hear the word and, we multiply. So all we're doing is following these two branches. So it's going to be 10 over 24 multiplied now by 9 over 23. You can, of course, simplify this, uh, but my sort of advice is, if, unless you're going to get it right, don't simplify it. Don't get it wrong just to try and simplify it. It's a calculator paper, so you can just put it all in to a calculator and find the value. So that's going to give me now 15 over 92. Okay, so 15 over 92 as an exact value. And to three significant figures, we can write this now as 0.1. Six, three. So that's part A. I would work definitely, if we had to take this on any further, with the exact value. This is a truncated answer, so it's important we work with this one if we had to use it in the future. One dark chocolate and one milk chocolate. It's going to be dark and milk or milk and dark. So if we do dark and milk, what we're going to have is 10 over 24 multiplied by 14 over 23. I've said dark and milk, so it's multiplication. You might have spotted that the probabilities of these are going to be equal. So what we could do is just say two lots of this, or we could say or, so as soon as it's or, we're going to add now 14 over 24, which is the milk, and then the dark, which is going to be now 10 over 23. I would simply just do two lots of this in the calculator. So what we'll have then is two lots now of... Uh, and you can write the fraction as 10 times by 14, and then in the uh, denominator we can just put 24 times by 23. But please, do just get cool with your own calculator. Don't try and follow something that you're not comfortable with. That's going to give us 35 over 69. So 35 over 69, which to three significant figures, will give us now 0 0.507. So 0 0.507. So what we've done on the first one is dark and dark. On the second one, we've done dark and milk or milk and dark. We've appreciated the probabilities are going to be the same each time. So I've just done two lots of this. OK, so that's a nice straightforward one. What we're now going to look at is another example. This time we're told Jean always goes to work by bus or takes a taxi. If one day she goes to work by bus, the probability that she goes to work by taxi the next day is 0.4. If one day she goes to work by taxi, the probability that she goes to work by bus the next day is 0 0.7. Given that Jean takes the bus 
to work on Monday, find the probability that she takes a taxi to work on Wednesday. I find with these uh, questions, it's more about the wordiness than the actual maths. What we're going to look at then is the following. We are talking about Monday and we're interested in Wednesday. So what I'm going to have is now Monday and Wednesday. So our first one is going to be now the Tuesday and then we're going to have the Wednesday on the end. So what we've got then is the following. We, it says, given that Jean took the bus to work on Monday. Let's put Tuesday here. So this is going to be Tuesday and this is going to be Wednesday. So if she takes the bus to work on Monday, the probability she's going to take a taxi to work the next day has got to be 0 0.4. We can put that on. If you just read the text, if one day she goes to work by bus, and it says she goes to, bus, uh, goes to work by bus on Monday, the probability that she goes to work by taxi the next day is 0 0.4. Therefore, the probability that she goes by bus has got to be 0 0.6, as she only goes by either bus or taxi. These have to be equal to 1. The killer mistake is putting 0 0.7. That's not the correct outcome. Now, let's think about the next day. This is now Wednesday, so we're interested in a taxi and bus again. If we read the text, what we're told is the probability, if one day she goes to work by taxi, which is this day, the probability that she goes to work by bus the next day is 0 0.7. So she's taken a taxi, so this is going to be 0 0.7, and this must be 0 0.3. Again, don't be tempted to put the 0 0.4. Okay, this scenario is exactly the same as what we started with. She's taken a bus the day before, so the probability now that she takes a taxi is 0 0.4, and the probability that she takes a bus is 0 0.6. So, given that Jean takes a bus to work on Monday, find the probability that she takes a taxi to work on Wednesday. We've got two choices. On Tuesday she could do taxi and Wednesday she could do taxi. That's taxi and taxi. As soon as I say taxi and taxi, we're going to be multiplying. So it's going to be 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.3. Or, and then we know that we need to add these, we're going to have bus and taxi on the next one. So she's either gone taxi, taxi, or bus and taxi. So bus on Tuesday, taxi on Wednesday. So what we're going to have is 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.4. So all we need to do is add them. That's going to be 0 0.12, and this is going to be now 0, what's that, 0 0.24. So in total, 0 0.36. So the probability that uh, she goes to um, work in a taxi on Wednesday is going to be 0 0.36, given that she took the bus to work on Monday. So there we go, using tree diagrams to solve problems with conditional probability.